food layout to facilitate access for the new Christchurch Hospital car park building. Um, I note that there's, um, sorry? Excuse me, Leanne, it's actually item 11, the review of the gambling and TAB venues. Oh, building. sorry. Sorry, you know, we had all those deputations and um, I thought, no, we've done that. <laughs> sorry, my apologies. Right, now item 11, the review of gambling and TAB venues policy. Um, who's, Peter who's move. Sarah's moved and seconded by Andrew, but um, have we got a staff who, who's presenting on this one? Uh, I am. Sorry, Alan, I, I didn't see you there. So um, if we if if you could um, uh, uh, present the item and uh, and then we'll move on to questions. Thank you. Right. Um, so the gambling and TAB venue policy is required under legislation to be reviewed this year. Um, the current policy has been in place since 2004 and has been retained without amendment um, at every review uh, since then. Uh, the current policy is a sinking lid on pokey venues, which means we will not grant consent for any new venues or allow existing venues to increase machine numbers. It is the strictest policy settings available under the Act. TAB venues can establish subject to all, uh, meeting all statutory requirements, but it only applies to standalone TABs. Uh, the policy does not apply to existing venues, so we cannot close venues and we cannot force them to reduce machine numbers. Um, the findings of the review are detailed in the social impact assessment. Uh, key points to note, we have more machines per capita compared to the national average in every major New Zealand city. We also have significantly higher rates of people seeking assistance for problem gambling compared to the national average. And of our problem gambling clients, over 50% said that pokies was their primary form of gambling. Therefore, we are recommending you retain the policy without amendment for a further three years. Um, also, just to note, the uh, Ministry of Health are currently consulting on their um, strategy to minimise gambling harm, um, which is required under the Gambling Act. Um, even though our policy and the Ministry strategy are both required under the same piece of legislation and they are both intended to minimise gambling harm, they are not linked to each other. So any changes that the Ministry make as a result or through their strategy will not uh, impact our policy and we will not have to amend the policy. Um, have to take any questions. Thank you. Um, do I have questions? Yes, Sarah Templeton. Thanks so much for that, Alan. Um, just one, one note, the, while it says that um, this has been in place since 2004 and we've sort of kept the same wording right through, the, the reviews that have been done, while they haven't been um, sort of gone out for consultation and things, the, the decisions in the past that have been made not to make a change have been done based on a significant amount of background work and those kind of things, haven't they? I remember doing that in the, um, the previous term on the Regs Committee. Yes, every at every review, um, the team have looked through um, current gambling numbers, uh, venue and machine numbers and rates of problem gambling and weighed that up against the um, the community benefit of gambling in terms of those grants um, consulted at least stakeholders um, and then gone to council for a decision. So it's been a full review every time, um, yeah. even though they haven't always gone out for um, a special consultative procedure. Yeah, so it's not that we haven't had a look at it in all these times. We have, and we've just decided that um, on the balance, it's worth keeping as it is. That's correct. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Aaron. Yeah, just two questions around the deputations this morning. Um, one of the points raised was uh, by uh, the, the, the man, Mr. Barrett, whose father um, had had the heart attack. He had talked about the liquor licensing and how those same uh, kind of rules aren't around, the, um, uh, around gambling licenses. Uh, What's the way forward on that and what can we do as a council to help get that to happen, firstly? Um, so the uh, council don't have a role in licensing and compliance under the Gambling Act. All of that sits with the Department of Internal Affairs. The only role we have as a council is to grant consent for any new venues. Um, Gavin might be able to speak to whether there's any sort of changes proposed or um, regarding the um, alcohol licensing. 
Uh, none that I'm aware of at the moment. Um, and as Alan says, we we simply don't have a role in that um, monitoring and compliance function. Aaron, are you asking whether we should perhaps be um, advocating a recommendation that we advocate to central government for uh, a more, um, uh, well, for a more appropriate, um, uh, you know, provision, set of provisions? Because I actually quite liked the way that they utilise the sale of liquor act as, well, not whatever it's called now, yep. Um, yep. yeah, as a mechanism. Are, are you suggesting that? Absolutely, that the um, that it should just be a host responsibility uh, that mm. it goes along the same as you do with alcohol. I actually just put in my licence yesterday and had to go through pages and pages of how you are going to look after your guests. And it should be no different for this because the harm can be done. So if we can put something in, would be uh, good. Yeah, well, if, if staff could work up some, some wording along the lines of... Um, advocate or, or perhaps I could even write to the to, to central government um, to to ask for uh, a mechanism for enforcing uh, you know the, the um, I don't know if they're called host responsibility perhaps Alan you can help me out there do they call it host responsibility in terms of the uh, problem gam the gambling measures they're supposed to have in place um yes that's correct yeah so yeah. Um, some, uh, yeah, host responsibility provisions. So if somebody could work on some drafting for uh, a, an amendment to, well, not an amendment, but just an additional uh, resolution, if that would be okay with the mover and the seconder? Yeah, yes, yeah, okay. And, and then the other one was around um, from the uh, Gambling Association or, or Machine Owners Association, whatever they call themselves, the... Um, they're better about the relocation provision. Now, they made some interesting points there around uh, when they're in particular areas, they can cause problems. Now, I'm in Hewood, and if poking machines wanted to relocate from a, a high deprivation area and go to, say, Clearwater, I, as the local councillor, wouldn't have an issue with it. Uh, so I think there are places where they could be moving to that could have better outcomes for society. So why are we not looking at that in our policy? So we did look at a relocation provision as part of the review. Um, two things that we found. First, um, you would need to think about where you considered it appropriate for a venue to relocate to. Some of the feedback we got from um, stakeholders in the health service and problem gambling sector um, reiterated that relocation provisions just shift the problem into another community. There's also a recent study out of Germany that found that adding um, one new pokey venue into an area that didn't have pokey venues increased uh, gambling harm uh, at, a, at a higher rate than adding machines to a venue that already had uh, at a, a location that already had existing um, machines. Uh, the other issue is that um, we can't force venues to relocate. We would only be giving them the opportunity to do so. Um, essentially, we consider that a relocation provision would be a softening of the current approach um, and would likely slow the reduction in, uh, in, in pokey venues and machines over time. Right. So I, I, I thought there was an opportunity from the way they spoke that it, and it could be done with um, a, a responsible council. So if your local community board agreed that one could move from a particular location to another because they could see the benefits that was put forward, then if, as long as it's agreed by the community, I don't see the problem because they did highlight where harm can be done and uh, they would be happy to, well, not necessarily, well, potentially happy to move to solve a problem from both sides. So I think we should be working to solve the problems rather than the car blanche, no, we're not having anything to do with this. Well, I mean, that's not really a question for staff to answer. That's the that's the political debate that we'll have um, uh, as to whether we agree that we should be going out um, for but it's not an option consultation. On the table today. Um, no, but that's because our recommendation. Well, the recommendation we have from staff is to retain the existing policy without amendment for a further three years. 
and uh, the alternative point of view is the one that you're now expressing, which is we um, is to vote against that and and go out for consultation. So that's it's an alternative um, point of view. You can foreshadow a motion saying that you would like to um, uh, receive the report, but go out for that amendment only. I'll foreshadow that, please. Thank you, um, Anne. Yeah. Sure. Uh, um, thanks, Alan. You you clearly explained why um, the, uh, the lack of connection between what we do and what the Ministry of Health does. But I am wondering, would there be any benefit in, in perhaps waiting for the results of that uh, consultation um, before we, you know, so rather than putting this in place for three years, waiting perhaps uh, only for one year and then adjusting it uh, in you know, when, once we see those results, what, what are your thoughts? Um, so the policy, uh, the Gambling Act and the Racing Industry Act require the policy to be reviewed every three years because it was reviewed in 2018. We are required to review it this year, but there's nothing in the Act that stops us from reviewing it early. So if there was a desire from Council to um, review the policy again next year or in 2022, um, as a result of the... Um, the strategy that the Ministry of Health um, implement, um, there's nothing stopping us doing that. All right, thank you for that. Does that, yeah, I mean, I'm wondering if councillors, we should consider that um, amending something there. Um, Yanni. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, some, similar to Aaron's question, really. I, I just wondered whether, as a city, we can meet... I mean, we've got um, Department of Internal Affairs, as I understand it, has local government um, people that are supposed to work with us, like, like around the water reforms. Um, so my understanding is they're kind of like a local government partnership role. But I think there's really... I mean, it seems really um, uh, unsatisfactory that, A, um, the monitoring around the host responsibility... Um, especially when we've heard the story that we heard this morning. So, you know, I think we need to try and get a meeting with Department of Internal Affairs, understand where their current thinking is, and look at what the opportunities are. But I'm increasingly concerned that um, that that the harm that's been done is because of a lack of monitoring and enforcement by Department of Internal Affairs on existing regulations and rules, as opposed to needing new powers. But I don't, we don't. I don't know if we have any evidence of that. Um, so, so I just, I, I guess, I was just curious whether staff think that there's a need to add additional powers, or whether there's existing powers that can be used, but they just need to be enforced. That was the first question. Um, yes. So we just we have a very limited role in there uh, under the Act. So we don't have any licensing or compliance um, powers um, under the Gambling Act to um, to enforce anything. I can't speak to um, what Department of Internal Affairs are currently doing with respect to licensing and compliance in Christchurch, though. So. Right, but it might be useful for us as a council to hear directly from them. Um, and then just the, the the second question I had was, if we're going to advocate to central um, government around mechanism for enforcing host responsibility for gambling and TAB venues, do, can, can we also include something around the distribution of funds? I note that in the last two years, I understand the government has allowed um, a lot of the revenue not to actually be paid out because of COVID. Uh, but we also know that, for example, I think from previous studies that we've done, that the money does not go back into the communities where it comes from. It, it goes into other communities. Um, so yes, we we could, um, as part of recommendations, for really advocate. Uh, so the what you're talking about regarding the community funding um, is reiterated by Problem Gambling Foundation, um, who expressed concern that the communities, um, community groups, can become dependent on class four funding and are concerned by the um, the uh, funding structure of class four gambling. Um, but yes, that would be something that would need to be taken up with Department of Internal Affairs. 
Okay, so can I just suggest maybe under three, we, we may wish to consider and it's some additional wording around around that, but I'll leave that over to the mover and seconder whether they wish to amend that or have a new resolution. Um, it's hard to do that, Yanni, without knowing exactly what the issues are to, uh, to, to know, but I'm happy to, um, to get some information on it maybe. Well, that's why I thought it would be best for us to meet to have like a, a, a briefing with the Department of Internal Affairs first to understand before we wrote around the mechanism. But I'm happy to do whatever. I do think it's it's important to get progress on it as soon as possible. Well, how about how about we meet them and then see where we go from there on the on the funding stuff? Yeah, and maybe maybe a small working party would be uh, you know with a fixed term just quickly focused on this issue. Um, a coalition of the willing, perhaps. Um, yeah, I think, I think that that would be good. I mean, from my understanding, my ward has generates some of the highest income from pokey machines. And when you look at where the money goes, very little goes back into those communities. So I just And that's sure because we've heard very loudly and clearly who they take the money off and where it's and how it's distributed. So, um, well, maybe, maybe the wording of that third one needs to be um, just... Uh, uh, request that um, oh, maybe that the, 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 the council the council advocate um, oh, oh do, do you want to just do you want to just oh I don't know I don't know I didn't I didn't actually want to say right the mayor to write to central government I mean that's that's um, Request that the council advocate, yeah, yeah, that the council will, um, yeah, advocate, advocate for better enforcement, yeah, of host responsibility, yeah, and equitable funding distribution. Yeah, 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 yeah. That picks up both points. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Well done, um, Aaron. You had another question. Yeah, it was. Um, so I think for there to be an alternative for the relocation provision, number two would have to fail in the vote, unless the, I, and I don't know if the mover and seconder would want to change that now, but um, is that what you're meaning, Leah? That two would have to fail? Yeah, if two fails, then you can put the, you can put your um, alternative resolution, which is go out and just consult on that one issue. For the the relocation provision, yeah, uh, that we would consult on that. So just also on the last point, because if we're going to consult on that, the other one that I'd be interested in us consulting on, because I brought it up ten years ago, not that I've been around as long as Yanni, but it, and it was around that funding that comes from uh, the pokey machines that's meant to go into the community. That's that's actually done by the. Um, uh, community boards rather than in, in the areas where it's gathered it then goes back out via the community boards rather than via these kind of secret handshakes well, well, but only I, consult on it it's, I, I would not be, uh, it's, it's not something that we can consult on but we should advocate for a uh, not an uh, not um host responsibility better enforcement of host responsibility and it should be not in... And equitable um, funding distribution. Equitable um, funding distribution. And I can mean, I just say the issue with Aaron's point is that actually it would have to be national legislation and most areas don't have community boards. So right. Yeah, but it might be that um, local uh, councils or... Um, or elected members by from the public are deciding where that money goes, and I think that's a better way to spend it. I've never, never liked the gaming trust, so <laughs> it's not, it's not, um, that's not that that's a a personal view that I've had for a very long time, long time before um, I took up this role. So uh, I think that an equitable funding um, distribution mechanism is is absolutely vital. So. Yeah, no, that's that's a good point. All right, um, so we've got um, it moved and seconded. We have a foreshadowed motion if uh, number two is is uh, lost. Um, so can you put two separately, please, Leah. Yes, we'll put two separately for that reason. 
So is there any debate? All right. So I will put um, I will put uh, number two. Um, so all those. Well, um, is it quicker to poll it, or or can people put their hands up, or what? How are we going to do this? Right. All those in favour of number two. And those who are not in favour of number two, can you can you indicate who you are now? Aaron, Phil, Catherine. Aaron, Phil, and Catherine. Okay, so that is carried, and I'll put the um, other elements of the um, motion um, one and three. All those in favour, thumbs up. And those opposed, there appear to be none. So I will, uh, that, that motion is carried. So thank you very much for that. Uh, the, um, look, I'm just wondering, if, if, what's the time now? 107. We'll stop now for uh, the lunch break. And we will resume again at 2 p.m. So thank you very much, and and thanks for your consideration uh, in this very difficult way that we are having to conduct the meeting today. So thank you.